Well, welcome to uh, a bit of a day session. So we've uh, tripped up to North Norfolk today to try and get hold of some pack. As you can probably tell by the weather and the swell, it's not really the best day for it. Um, ideally, I'd like the conditions to be a bit calmer than this, certainly with some clear water. Um, murky as hell out there today with all the, uh, the swell stirring the seabed up. So uh, yeah. Probably not a lot of hope of getting some mackerel today, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. We'll chuck some, uh, some feathers out, maybe a few lures for the bass, and see what happens. Okay, you might be wondering what sort of gear you need for macro fishing. It's not really complicated. Um, there's no real specialist gear out there for it because it's not really needed. Um, I use my very old, very, very old two and a half pound test of carp rod. Um, there's enough backbone in it to get it out as far as you need from the shores. Certainly if you're pier fishing or anything like that, you're not going to need anything too heavy. Um, and that's just coupled up with, uh, again, my very old Regal. Um, it's a 4000, it's a bait runner. Um, could use anything. Um, it's my old carp gear. Um, it serves the purpose. Um, not too worried if it gets a bit smashed up out here. Um, one thing you do have to remember is you're dealing with the sea, things are going to get salty. So uh, just make sure you clean them in salt, uh, fresh water, not salt water, after you've used them. Um, it keeps everything in, in tip top condition. Um, paired up with this, I've got some, you probably can't see it, but it's a uh, it's 18 pound line. Uh, I use that straight through to a, uh, a swivel. The um, reason I use a swivel is it just makes changing between lures and feathers much, much easier. You don't have to retie, um, you just clip on. Um, buy ones that are actually sort of decent, a decent weight to them um, and, and strong enough for sea fishing. Don't go with the really thin match fishing ones. Um, you'll find as soon as you cast out, they just buckle and can't deal with certainly a full string of mackerel. So that's my uh, very easy setup. Um, yeah. Moving on, feathers. Um, this is probably the standard what people would uh, would use nowadays, just a, a set of a set of feathers. Um, I tend to only use three types. Um, they're the day glows. Um, I use some glitter feathers, um, and I also just use some of these, which are a bit like a sabiki, I guess. Um, they tend to be the three that I do use more often than than not. Um, Day glows for me are the, probably the, the, the killer ones. Um, they will always pick out the better fish. Um, and also, if they are a little bit finicky, they seem to pick out more fish as well. Um, essentially, when the uh, mackerel are having it, you can use anything. Um, they will snap at most things. Um, I do actually like tying my own mackerel feathers, so I use white feather for that. Um, I'll probably do a demonstration on how I do that um, uh, another time. Um, I don't actually have any with me at the moment either. Um, but yeah, very, very easy. These essentially just clip onto the um, link that you had on your main line through a swivel like this. And um, again, it just stops things taffling up. And then they are then set up so that you have a string of those which go down to another swivel on the end. And then a simple three ounce lead. Um, this is just a standard carp fishing one. Um, I think it's a Taylor's lead lounge lead from uh, for memory. Um, but yeah, very simple. It's a matter of just casting these out, letting them hit the bottom, and then alternating your retrieve. So sometimes you want to be reeling in quickly, sometimes slowly, because the mackerel can either be high or low in the water. Um, very easy setup, very, very effective. 
All I would say is if the mackerel are really having it, snip a couple of the hook points off. Um, you don't need to be pulling in strings of six and seven every single time. Um, but yeah, nice easy setup, passes an hour or two in the summer day.